Today I am joined by Liam McGing, perhaps the best McGing to ever play in the A-League, currently of Sydney United. Thank you so much for joining me today, Liam. No, thank you for having me. Appreciate you having me on. It's been a long time coming. Well, my first question is always a quite easy little softball question. So it's just where did your passion and love for football first begin? To be fair, you probably touched on it. I would be watching my brother. Um, grew up, you know, just watching him play and then being in the backyard with him. Never took it easy on me, mind you. Always ended up crying. He was absolutely smashing me. Um, but probably was the reason I did, I wouldn't say amazingly so far, but, you know, the reason I got on to, you know, play professionally. So I uh, appreciate him for that. Yeah, I'd probably, it'd definitely be just watching him play, being around that environment. Now, I'm not sure Jake would really like the introduction I go, but, you know, you, you did Stop mention it. your brother is also a professional football player. You guys are both yeah. defenders, which isn't yeah. super common in the world of professional football. You often see, yeah. you know, like Joel Griffiths and Adam Griffiths, that's a striker, a defender. Will Keane, yeah. Michael Keane, striker, defender. You guys are both defenders. So what was your backyard games like? You mentioned just smashing each other. Was was it just you guys being ultra defensive or were you maybe destined to be a striker back in the day? Well, that's the thing. I think for both of our careers, I think we progressively got moved more and more back. I think you know, we just slowly end up, maybe that says a lot about our striking ability more than anything, but more than our defending ability, but we progressively just kept moving back. I I was a striker maybe under 14s and then ended up right mid, defensive mid, center back, and then ended up. And I know Jake was a bit similar. I think in when he was at Central Coast and Wales, Oh, it's all gone now, but yeah, the youth team, he was attacking mid, went to defensive mid and like centre back, right back. So yeah, I think it's, it probably says a bit about our actually striking abilities more than anything probably. <laughs> and we all sort of have that dream when we're playing football in the backyard. Well, most of us, I don't want to speak for everyone. That dream of becoming a professional athlete, whether or not it's football or cricket or something else. You know, a lot of us realise pretty soon that it's a bit of an unrealistic dream that maybe we might not achieve that. But for you, when was that moment, if you ever had a moment, where you realised that chasing football as a profession is something that you could realistically do? Yeah, maybe, I'd say probably around the, like, 15s, I'd say. So I was playing at Sydney United, funnily enough, uh, when uh, under 14s, and then I got... Um, chosen to go to the institute program, so the New South Wales Institute program. And that's probably where I was like, okay, like I can see a pathway to, you know, a potential professional um, career. Whether, you know, that was actually possible was still highly unlikely. It wasn't until, honestly, I probably got my first professional contract and I was like, oh, actually this this makes a bit of sense. I spent a fair bit of time in uh, the Sydney Youth League system and even then just, you know, being on the brink of a deal, I was like, oh, maybe it's maybe it's not happening, maybe it is. Um, so okay. it wasn't until I actually signed pen to paper that I was like, oh, this, this, this could happen. <laughs> this, is, this is happening now, isn't it? <laughs> now, speaking of Sydney, I've spoken to a few people who've gone through the Sydney FC Academy and they kind of tell stories about how much they actually learned about being a professional footballer. John Idale had some good stories about the Sydney Academy. So for you, what was your experience like there? And what were some of the biggest lessons you learned early on about, you know, this whole new crazy life of professional football, or at least trying to make it in professional football? Yeah, I think it's, especially at Sydney, I was learning. So when I first went there, I was under Corica in the youth team. Um, and then Rob Stanton took over, who's now obviously Newcastle Jets coach, and he was just so thorough in everything he did. Um, it was just so professional and so all the tactical work. Like you, you come out of sessions just going like, "I'm a mastermind." So like, I feel like Pep Guardiola, just like him, just all this information you get, like it's just it was unbelievable. I mean, 
personally, I'm excited to see how he goes under, under Jess because I think he'll be amazing. Um, but he was, yeah, so thorough and just the professionalism of it all. I think it, you can see a clear pathway when you're at Sydney because it's morning trainings where you can see you can see those older boys and you can go, oh, you know, they can pluck you out of sessions and go, we need you to train up here. And it's that, it's that little bridge that gets created and you're like, I can see myself going to there. Um, just the whole professionalism of it all. And I think those tra- those mornings make it so much better where you can see that pathway with the first team and their environment. And you did get a little bit of a crack at the first team in your first stint at Sydney FC because you did join them again later on, but we'll talk about that later. You got your first crack of professional football actually in the Asian Champions League. So firstly, what was your whole experience just travelling with the team in the Asian Champions League like? And secondly, for that debut match, what do you actually remember about the game? And personally, how do you think you went when you finally stepped foot on the pitch? It was crazy, to be honest. So it was a dead rubber. um, And the A-League boys just won in Perth in the grand final week. So none of the boys, everyone hopped off a plane. None of them were playing. Obviously, they still partying after the the A League final. So we got this group of reserves slash youth team boys that were part of the Champions League squad, and we played against Kawasaki. It was Kawasaki Frontal. You might, I'm pretty, I'm quite certain it was. Well, I should know this, shouldn't I? Um, but it was. I remember the first. When, oh, maybe 15 minutes I think we were down maybe 3-0 and I've gone if this is professional football I don't think anyone's near it here I'm like oh my god this is concerning because they were just I just remember I, I thought they were playing with like 20 I remember like trying to count them I'm going nah there's no way there's 11 on this pitch because there's just people around you turn around like the hell are all these guys doing it but they were so they were so crafty they were just so quick and agile, and you, we slowly got into the game. We got we got thumped by memory. I think it was four 0 but well, I think we slowly got into it. But it was just it was an unbelievable experience. It was in Jubilee, like my family was all there. It was unbelievable. But um, yeah, I just remember saying like the pace of the game. I was like, oh no, like this is a, this is crazy. To be fair, it wasn't we were versus the Jap- uh, Japanese champions at the time, so I probably didn't. Didn't help my cause, but um, yeah, it was one, one to remember, that's for sure. You did have a brief stint after that. You left Sydney. You had a brief stint with Sutherland in the NPL. And then all of a sudden, a big yeah. adventure over to Wellington Phoenix. Believe this was right before COVID happened. So yeah, firstly, yeah. how did that move to the Knicks come about? And, you know, what was your initial thoughts on the whole situation at Wellington? Because you were there for a little bit and then you guys sort of had to go into this hub with COVID where you were basically living back in Australia and Wollongong. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. So oh yeah. So originally, what happened was, well, I was playing for Sutherland, mind you, undefeated at Sutherland. So I don't know why there's not a statue of me there. Um, for the six games I think I had, um, we were so I was here and Chief obviously Wolfie just took over at uh, Wellington and Chief went his back room at uh, second assistant at the time, and I was. NYL captain for Chief at Sydney. So that's how it all related. And then I ended up getting signed there, um, which was amazing. And then, yeah, so we played the, how'd that season work? It was about, I feel like we played about 17 odd games. And we were like second, we were flying. And then all the COVID stuff happened. We originally went to Narrabeen. And we're in a bubble there. And they were trying to, it was all frantic because no one, it was all new and no one knew what we were doing. So we tried to do a bubble there and I think we tried to finish the season. And then we're watching the Melbourne City and Newcastle Jets game. And then there's an announcement that the league's suspended. So the next day to avoid, for those, like those boys that were, Kiwi, they had to be on the next flight. Otherwise, they're getting locked into uh, Sydney and having to do another two week quarantine or whatever it was. So they end up having to fly. I was all just frantic. I, I was lucky enough, obviously, I was based in New South Wales. So I'm based in Sydney. So I just got to go home. But it was, um, yeah, it was unbelievable. And then even like coming back, we were, we were in a we were in a we were in Parramatta Holiday Inn for six or seven weeks to finish off that season, and then obviously, as you said, the um the Wollongong adventure, which was I feel sorry for those boys to be honest. Like it, it was a very difficult time for them, not for me. Oh, I loved it. I was I was still living at home, and I got to play from Wellington, which didn't make sense. I was living in Sydney, <laughs> it was unbelievable. But I feel sorry for those boys. Obviously, that's a you know, when you sign a contract, especially those boys that did like multi year deals, they didn't expect to be having to move and relocate to Sydney to play for Wellington. Like it just didn't make sense. But it was just a it's a crazy time. And they are looking at it, it's just a crazy time, wasn't it? Um obviously we played out of Wollongong and I enjoyed that season personally, because I was living at home. But um yeah, it was mental. Was it was it was really crazy to be honest. And obviously, Wellington Phoenix had some quite good players, as you mentioned there. One who was actually, you know, the captain, a big name, and also played as a centre back alongside you often was Stephen Taylor. Now, what's it like being a young boy just coming through in professional football? And you have, I'm a Newcastle fan. You have a Newcastle United legend right next to you. What's he like to play alongside? Is he very chatty? Does he get up here if you misplace the uh, ball? Or is he one of those guys that you kind of just watch and learn from? Um, very chatty. You also watch and learn from him. He will never be, you won't hear him yelling negatively at you. You know, like he's a, he was, he was top class, to be honest. And being a young boy, you just take it all in. Um, and he had, he had some stories, to be fair. He's just like, you don't realize, like, this is one of those people who just don't really realise what he's done in football because how humble and casual he is about it all, you know. Um, but as you said, he was probably the golden boy for Newcastle for how many years and just end up in Wellington Phoenix, which was like just – but I loved it. Loved, loved being in Wellington. Just He just enjoyed enjoyed it all, really. Um, and he's yeah, top top player and – top human as well like just such a good leader um yeah good for a laugh too and you did move i I alluded to it earlier you moved back to sydney fc it was kind of announced really under the radar i think i even remember messaging you on twitter saying like (laughs) did they even announce this because you were just in the squad and there was a lot of comments saying when did this happen? When did Liam McGing sign for Sydney FC? So how did that move come about going back to Sydney FC? And was there any other offers on the table, maybe A-League, maybe NPL? Because 
you know, you didn't play heaps and heaps at Wellington Phoenix, but you still got a decent crack of games and you were playing some decent football in the A-League. Yeah. Well, if we want to go back to... When I was at Wellington, I actually... So I had a stint, I think it was like seven starting games in a row. And then ended up reversed. We were playing in Newcastle, but I don't think we were versed in Newcastle. We were versed in Brisbane. And I collided, I think I was in between Tom Aldred and Ollie Sale. And I've come down, hit like the point of my elbow and I was like, something's not right here. Anyway, I played the rest of the game, probably 20 minutes. And then get on to like the physio bed after I'm like, to my physio, I'm like, something's, something's not right here, man. He's like, oh, all right. All right. So I try to take off my thing. I'm just in pain. And we had a Newcastle to Wollongong bus ride. Just the whole trip, pain. It was about three hours. I'm just going, oh, my God, something's not right here. He was sent for an x-ray the next day, and he's like, physio was like, oh, like, all good. There's no bone problem. I'm like, sweet, yeah, sweet. And he goes, I'll strap it up tomorrow. Oh, we had a quick turnaround with us in victory on midweek, so maybe the next day. He's like, I'll strap it up and see how you go. And I'm like, sweet, strap it up. Go to Go for a run. I'm just feeling my shoulders going like it's like clicking in and out. It's just going like this. I'm going, okay, that that doesn't sound right. And, and physio was like, all right, we'll send you for an MRI. I'm like, sweet. Anyway, M- MRI comes back. He's like, all right, you've dislocated your shoulder. It's like a sub dislocation. And he goes, but normal people do it forwards. And he's like, you've done the opposite direction. So the strapping tape I did actually was pushing against it so that's the reason it was going like this i'm like that sounds perfect doesn't it (laughs) so then i was injured for a while after that obviously yeah shoulder dislocation there's all these muscles around it um and then yeah store out the season wellington didn't really see much of the field after that um and then it was yeah covid time still and i think it was it was real weird because you couldn't leave your radius so like people were asking for trials and stuff like that and I'm like well I can't I can't leave like you know Campbell Town's not around I don't think was MacArthur around then I couldn't leave anywhere um and then must have uplifted uh some of the rulings and then I end up trialing at Newcastle Jets so I was trialing at Newcastle Jets and we ended up versus Sydney in a friendly. I ended up playing that game. And so Newcastle were, I feel like they were keen on you, um, on me, but I don't know. That's what they were saying. But <laughs> it could be, could be all, um, all a bit of lies. But um, so they were keen on me. Uh, and but then Sydney were like, we can offer you a injury replacement deal because someone went down injured for an extended period of time. So I was like, well, I'll sign at Sydney. So that's what it all it all real it happened real quick. I don't reckon I was. I feel like when you probably saw the announcement is when I signed for him. Like it was just. It all happened so quick, and I think we end up playing. It was maybe the start of the season. Of end up playing in the derby, and I was on the bench that weekend. But I might have signed on the Thursday, and I was in the squad on the Saturday. And I remember I played in the cup game, like the following Wednesday. <laughs> it was just all just went like that. And of course, Sydney FC they have some very very good players back then, especially they had Alex Wilkinson. In my mind, the best centre back the league's ever seen. So, mm-hmm. bite for a spot is pretty difficult for you when you've got a player like that. And you did play in the cup and then you pretty much sat on the bench for the, like the whole season, to be honest. Maybe not even getting a few minutes here and there. And come the end of the season, the Asian Champions League, after all this time on the sidelines, on the bench, not really getting match minutes you sort of got thrown into the deep end in these tough Asian Champions League matches away from home, tough conditions. How difficult was that for you to adjust to, to get into that mindset of going, okay, we're playing football again, tough conditions, strange conditions, you know? How hard was it for you to just play your game? 
Yeah, I don't think you I feel, you prepare for it a lot. Like obviously the essence, uh, strength and conditioning side of things, they always keep you prepared for when you do get, you know, inevitably you have to have to play. Um, although the conditions probably weren't the best, we're in Vietnam and it was obviously humid as. It was probably about like ninety five percent humidity. It was like thirty degrees odd, um, but I loved it. We versed John Book, I believe, um, and it was it was unbelievable. Obviously, the body didn't really keep up with us. Probably hadn't played for about three or four months, um, so it ended it end up failing me towards the end of it, but. It was such a good experience, I think. Um, yeah, I think you're always, you're never not prepared to be, you never, you want to be chucked in the deep end, really. Like, especially if you're like myself or like one of these young boys, um, I'm probably not so young anymore, but um, you want to play regardless of, you know, when it is who it's against you you just want to play football so um you know to get the opportunity to do that in the asian champions league was amazing your next move was also one that was a bit chucked into the deep end you joined finn hearts in ireland while they're in the middle of a relegation battle and some of the fans on facebook talking about the team and how how they thought they were so bad and how dire the situation was coming over there what was that like for you being this Australian boy, this foreign boy coming into this team when they're in the middle of a relegation dogfight, the fans are turning on them. It's a tough league that you've never played in before. It's a real tough experience. What was that all like for you to wrap your head around? See, I was excited for it just because, well, I wanted to play, which I ultimately didn't really get as many minutes as I probably wanted to. Like, I thought it was a good opportunity to go there and play football, which, you know, you want to do. Um, obviously, I, my grandparents are Irish, so I thought it would be a nice experience just to play there professionally and um, play. Obviously, the relegation scrap didn't help it too much, but it was such a good experience. The whole league, I think, it, obviously, like getting relegated wasn't wasn't the best experience, but um, I think the whole – it's a good league. Um, and I th think there's a good opportunity to, you know, climb up to, you know, different parts of Europe through, you know, that avenue. Obviously, it didn't work out the way I was kind of hoping for it to happen. But, um, yeah, it, it's it, it's a great league. You know, you got the champions there playing conference league and stuff like that. So – um, it was unfortunate the way it ended with relegation, and to be to be fair, they're struggling struggling now because um in the second division. But it's such a good fan base, such a great core fan base, and I think some of those sta like Australia need to learn from some of those stadiums. You know where they're like max three thousand capacity, but they're just on top of you. You can hear and feel everything. It's it's amazing. Like the atmosphere is just so much better than. I would say, uh, you know, eighty-five percent of the Australian games just because of, you know, they're just right on top of you. Whereas compared to like, you know, if you're playing a, a distance derby, for example, probably, but and teams are both struggling. But um, and there's you know five thousand at Sky Stadium, but there's you know just nowhere near you, so you can't really feel that. Um. But yeah, it was a good experience. I think the league is um, probably it's growing, especially with uh, the amount of European competitions and everything like that. Um, still keep up to date with it now. So you know, I had a, I had a good time there. It's unfortunate how it ended with relegation. And after pretty much two seasons or a season and a half where you didn't play as much football as you would have liked, coming back to the MPL, signing with Marco and Stallions, and playing regular football, how good was that for you mentally? Did it sort of reinvigorate that spark of football for you? And, you know, how much did you enjoy that overall, just playing week in, week out? No, 100%. It's, that's the main reason I did it. I just wanted to 
I was, it got to the point where you're not enjoying it. I think your confidence is going a little bit. Um, so it was just about getting that confidence back and trying to just enjoy my football again. Um, I think it was a long time in between that. And I think you see, you see a fair few people do that just because I think you'd rather be like the NPL competitions are like quite good to be honest. Um, I think you'd rather be playing week in week out there than being that fringe A League player. Although it's you know good for the CV and everything, but I just think most people would probably jump at the chance of just playing week in week out. I think that's that's what you want to do. You're a footballer at the end of the day, and just that's that's the main thing. Just playing, and I think my confidence was shot a fair bit. So it was just about trying to, you know, week in, week out, get back to playing and just enjoy my football again. And we did have a bit of an announcement because I don't think it's been announced anywhere. At the start of the video, you are now a Sydney United player. So yeah. sorry to anyone finding that out here if you're a Marconi fan, but you have signed for yeah. Sydney United. They're yeah. a team, you know, whose fans expect a lot because... They're a team that's always had success and good footballers and good quality, just football being played on the park. So for any Sydney United fans who may be watching this, you know, hopefully they are, what can what can they expect to see from Liam McGing in, in the upcoming season? I think as far as Sydney and I go, the yeah, besides they were in the Australian Cup final last year, I think they want success and I don't think they've had that in the MPL the last couple of years um, like this season I'd like to say they finished about 8th and I think it was the same season before um, and that's not where Sydney United is as a team so just winning I want I, I want trophies you know I think um, just working hard to get them I think is the is the main goal Um Obviously, this B League talk. I'm not sure exactly what's happening with it all, but um, they're in the next phase of that. So, hopefully, there's a B League again. The players probably know just as much as you guys, but up in the air of what's happening, what's what's not happening with the B League. But if it's MPL, if it's B League, you know, just want want to win, um, win it, whatever the competition may be. And finally, 2023 is almost over, actually. So if all things go correct or if all things go right, what can we expect to see from Liam McGing for the rest of the year? That's a good question. All things go right. To be honest, the rest of the 2023 doesn't look too... I'm, I'm back in pre-season in November. Obviously, I'd like to... If all things go right... I'd like to be in the A-League again. I'd like to be playing professionally again. Um, yeah, whether it's A-League, whether it's overseas, uh, I think that's the goal. It just has... I feel like it just... I feel like, you know, mature my football in football and just... just You just want to be playing whether where, where that is, though. Um, and it, that's hard to... That's hard to guarantee, but... Um, yeah. On your question, if all goes well, I'm playing week in week out professionally. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. Obviously, Sydney United um preseason spree at the end of the 2023, so maybe I'm putting a good shift in preseason. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good answer, and fingers crossed, we see you in the A League again. You know, yeah. I believe that you have the quality to play in the A League, but. Appreciate Thank it. you so much for joining me today and answering all my questions. I really appreciate your time. No, anytime. Look, I've probably rambled on a little bit more than expected, but that's me, so...